All right, my friends. I just pressed the let's go live button and we're testing out the new software again today. We tried some new software this morning on our Membo stream and it worked nicely. So hopefully it is working nicely again here today on our lovely Friday. And let's see. Let's make sure we have, uh, is this working everybody? All right. It looks like we're good over here. That's tremendous news. Let's check over here. Hopefully on the locals, we should be good. It is a beautiful Friday, my friends. It looks like tubes are connecting themselves. That is tremendous news. That means we can go ahead and get started. So let's do it, shall we? Hang on a second. Is locals working? Let's wait for locals. I see something happening. We're testing new software. There it goes. All right, it's working. So let's get started, my friends, shall we? Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live, the show that spotlights misconduct involving police, prosecutors, and politicians. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney, and today we're talking about Trump trial. It's day four, and we've got a jury that has been selected, and so we're going to get into it. What happened there today? We have two sessions that we're going to go through. There was a morning session and an afternoon session. And the morning session was wrapping up the alternate jurors. Yesterday on day three, we had the full 12 plus an alternate. So we were most of the way there. We still needed a couple alternates and we got them settled in and closed out today. So we're going to go through that. Of course, things were tense today, man. You may have seen some of the headlines. Some dude set himself on fire out there outside of the courthouse. And so it was not a good scene. I watched it. We're not going to watch it here or go through it, but it was bad. And we're going to see if that dude, you know, survives, but obviously an unwell person. And so we'll talk a little bit about it. I do have the story, but it was tense there. Jurors were crying. Okay. This is Katie Fang from MSNBC saying they're shedding tears out here. They're too anxious. And then some dude just torches himself. So it's like, okay, I don't know what the heck's going on in New York, but it's mad madness out there. Trump came out before the proceedings started, said, you know, it's a good idea to ungag me since we have a constitution and we should be following it in this country. So we'll see what he said. And then as per usual, we'll jump in to see what inner city press had for us today. He was there reporting and it's been a grueling five days for him. So shout out to inner city press, all of his links are in the description below. Now that's in the morning session. In the afternoon session, they came back and earlier this week, we read through the Sandoval motion. This is the motion that really goes through all of Trump's prior bad acts. This was drafted by that Biden prosecutor called Matthew Colangelo. And Matthew Colangelo has been following Trump around from the very beginning. He worked at Tish's office, created litigation against Trump and Trump organization there. Then he went and joined the, the Biden DOJ and went and many people theorized can create the cases that Jack Smith inherited. And then now he's with Alvin Bragg, once again, prosecuting Trump. And he, he originated from the Obama White House, of course, as we know. And so they have submitted their motion saying that these bad acts should be illegible against Trump if he decides to testify. So we'll see what happened in there. Trump came out after the ceremony. Of course, we'll see what happened in there, courtesy of inner city press, Matthew Russell Lee. And then we'll take a look at what Trump said after the fact, because he came out after the day of trial and had something to say about all of this. And so we'll listen to what he had to say for us shortly. And let's see what's going on here. Uh, apologies. I have to take uh, deal with this. Okay. Dealt with. All right. So Trump is speaking after court. We'll see what he had to say. And then this is a pretty wild story, my friends. So we've got a precarious position over there in the House of Representatives. Speaker Mike Johnson might be getting the boot or something. I saw a clip from Representative Luna today saying that if there is the motion to vacate that moves forward with Mike Johnson, there might be two other moderate Republicans who bail out of here, give the Democrats the gavel back, and then guess what might happen? Holy moly. Not only maybe they, they you know attempt to keep Trump off the ballot or not seat him, but now they're conniving to remove Trump's Secret Service protection so that he can go to jail. I'm not joking. So here is what Benny Thompson has submitted. This is a new bill, new legislation to remove Secret Service from what they call disgraced former presidents. 
and that is for anybody who's sentenced over a year in prison. So if you get sentenced by, I don't know, I guess somebody called Judge Murkan, then they can revoke your Secret Service protection and send you to jail. Now they have a fact sheet on this, right? And I know what everybody's saying out there, like, whoa, 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 whoa. This feels like a little bit of an ex post facto law type of a situation, right? Or what kind of, what you know, bill of attainder. This is Congress legislating a penalty. What's going on here? Well, they have done their little fact sheet analysis and they say, this is all totally legitimate. So they can actually put him in jail. Isn't that amazing? So Benny Thompson submitted that. And then these whack jobs on CNN are actually, you know, hinting at this. You got this guy, whatever his name is. He comes out and he's saying, just lock him up, you know, throw him in the slammer for a couple of days. See how he likes it. Maybe he'll get the message from the uh, totalitarian takeover that is currently underway. So we're going to go through all of these segments today, my friends. It is a beautiful and amazing Friday. I hope you had an incredible week. Hopefully the week is coming to a close for you. You've knocked every single thing off your to-do list, off the list, just get out of here. And your email inbox is at zero and you called your mom. Amazing, what a tremendous week you've had. So we had a great members only stream this morning. And of course we did that at watchingthewatchers.locals.com where we like to debrief what's going on on the days in the mornings, come and join us. We also do streams on Saturdays and uh, yeah, we got some fun stuff cooking. So we're testing out some new software. I think we're gonna be able to integrate some of the Lodge stuff with all the Membo slots everywhere else. So I got some stuff we're working on. So come join us, watching the watchers.locals.com, streams in the morning, after parties, and an amazing community to boot. RobertGovea.com, if you wanna check out any PDFs that we have in store on the show today, we have a bunch that we're gonna go through, and not a bunch, but a couple that we'll take a look at from Alvin Bragg and others, I believe, yeah. Oh, from Benny Thompson. That's where we're going. I forgot. And then watcherlodge.com. So tomorrow, Sovereignty Saturdays. This is self-development and sovereignty. It's what we talk about at watcherlodge.com. We're checking out home gardening. I was at the range last weekend. Have some thoughts we'll talk about on that. We've got, uh, I was at Genius Network today and yesterday, which is a you know really you know interesting group. So I'm gonna, we're going to debrief a lot of the things we talked about there. And it's going to be fun. Come join us. It's free, watcherlodge.com. We'll see you over there. Links for all the stuff in the description below and thanks for supporting us some way we just want to see you just come join us just come you know join us somewhere else all right so let's get right into it the trump trial has its jurors all of them have now been selected sworn in opening arguments starting on monday now what happened today is things were pretty tense out there not only were jurors crying you can see this came out from katie fang she does msnbc stuff she says she was there reporting. We've got a few prospective jurors that have announced during voir dire that they're too anxious to sit on this jury. Oh no. And a few have actually broken down in tears. They're stressed, man. Political prosecutions are pretty uh, troubling in this country. So I can understand that stress being increased for people who have no experience with any of this. They're saying, wait a minute, you want me to go and find Trump innocent? Is that, are you kidding me? In New York, you want me to be the juror that finds Trump innocent? You want to, you want to give me the death penalty too? Would you like me to be eliminated as well? You, you, you're giving me a death warrant, thanks for that. So they all, you know, everybody's stressed out, freaked out about it. In fact, things got so bad, some dude lit himself on fire, right? And this is not good. So we'll just talk a little bit about this but it was horrific. Okay, there's videos flying all over the place on X. I'd avoid them if you could, but it's not good. This guy was a so-called researcher named Max, 37, set himself on fire, right? And it was on fire. And apparently he's still alive. I can't believe it after having uh, watched a bit of it. But police described the incident as propaganda based. He was there, he had signs. A lot of people on both sides are trying to point the finger at left, left they're saying, this is a typical Trumper. They just like themselves on fire. They're insurrecting their uh, uh, corpse. You know, you're like, wow, that's really pretty intense insurrection there. So, you know, it, it, they're pointing fingers every which way. My take on it, dude is obviously not well. That's, you know, anybody who sets themselves on fire, probably not, you know, fully there. So, you know, peace to his family. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on with him, but it's not good. Horrifying scenes. He was seen kneeling with his hands behind his head, engulfed in flames. And everybody was out there, right? So, I mean, if you really want to dig into this stuff, it's pretty morbid, but flames go up. Everybody, even the news media is like, what the heck's going on over there? 
So not good. He was seen kneeling with his hands behind his head. Officers rushed the scene to extinguish the flames. He was taken away in a gurney. People were throwing, he was throwing pamphlets and nobody knows what he was really there doing. I think he was kind of there protesting uh, both sides of it. So he was talking about, these were some of the pamphlets that was going out. This is an, an Occupy Returns booklet, like Occupy Wall Street maybe. It says abolish our criminal government, the true history of the world. Right, so that was kind of what was going on out there, and it was a mess. So there's a bunch of scenery there. We'll fast forward through it because it's just you know not not good. But my point in sharing this is things are tense, right? That's the scene. We always like to start the the segments with a little bit of setting the scene, so we get a feel for what's going on. Well, today some guy lit himself on fire. All right, so that's what's going on in New York. So Trump came out. Don't think the fire had happened yet when he was speaking on this one. So this was before all that took place. Of course, we are waiting for jury selection to start. We're going to be jumping in with inner city press, but this is Trump speaking before the day got underway. And people know, and people know it's very unfair. The gang order has to come off. People are allowed to speak about me, and I have a gang order. Just to show you how much more unfair it is. And the conflict has to end with the judge. The judge has a conflict, the worst I've ever seen. And it has to end with the judge. The gag order has to come off. I should be allowed to speak. Every time I come out to speak to you, I want to be open because we did absolutely nothing wrong. I showed you yesterday 30 stories, 32 stories of experts, legal experts, and I don't have one the other way. 32 stories of legal experts saying very strongly there's no case, this is a case should have been brought. Trump did nothing wrong. And they say it strongly, Trump did nothing wrong. So they ought to get rid of the conflict with the judge, because that's something that uh, he cannot do anything about. It's wrong. It's wrong. And the second thing is I have to be released of a gag order. They've taken away my constitutional rights to speak, and that includes speaking to you. I have a lot to say to you, and I'm not allowed to say it. And I'm the only yeah, one. Everyone else right. can say whatever they want about me. They can say anything they want. They can continue to make up lies and everything else. They lie. They're real scum. But you know what? I'm not allowed to speak. And I want to be able to speak to the friend, the press, and everybody else about it. So why am I gagged about telling the truth? I'm only telling the truth. They're not telling the truth. The judge That's why you're gagged, Mr. President. The judge has to take off this gag order. It's very, very unfair that my constitutional rights have been taken away. Thank you very much. Are you going to keep posting about my vote? Do you want to talk? Yeah, they don't gag you if you say a bunch of untrue, crazy things, right? You just run your mouth. Okay, that's crazy. Just let that guy keep running his mouth. Man, 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 man. Nobody cares what he says. They censor you when it's true. They gag you when it's true. When Trump comes out and says that the judge's daughter is running advertisements, promoting the indictment in her daddy's courtroom. He can't talk about it. Why? Because it's true. That's obviously why. So, all right, that is Trump. Now, we're going to jump into the day's affairs and inner city press. Matthew Russell Lee was there reporting, and he, of course, is outstanding. We encourage you to follow all of his stuff, and all of the links are down in the description below. And, of course, we always like to repost these puppies, so if you're following us, you know where to find him, but he's at inner city press on X, and links are in the description. So here is where we're at. The day is Friday, day four of trial. We took Wednesdays off back on Friday, waiting for the day to get in session. Everybody's there, seated at the tables. Boom, judge walks in. All right, oh gosh, this guy again. Uh, all right, sit back down. Please be seated. Clerk says, this is the time set for the case of people of the state of New York versus Donald Trump, CR 2024, whatever. Judge says, okay, good morning, everybody. Now I'm told that all 22 jurors are already here. Any reason we can't bring them all in here to get started? He says, we're working on the temperature, by the way, in the courtroom. And this is an insert from Matthew. He says, it is cold, man, it's cold. Judge Mercon, after the jurors walk in, uh, good morning, jurors. Now, we're going to explain what's happening this morning. You're about to answer the questionnaire, the one that we've already gone through here. 
So please begin by reading your three digit number out loud. They're seated in the seats now. Starting with you, madam, go. She says, I'm 428. I have anxiety, is what she says. Probably sounds like that too. I may not be able to not be emotional. People can figure out I'm here just from not being present. Like she's like, my job is going to wonder where I'm at. They're going to go, she's at the jury panel. They're going to go, that 428, man, she's on the Trump jury, isn't she? She gets excused. Next, 441. Ma'am, uh, tell us about yourself. She says, well, I'm originally from Spain. I'm currently not working, though. I have hobbies, though. I like art, and I like special events, and I don't belong to any organizations, and I've never been on a jury. I used to watch the news, but I don't do that anymore. And do I listen to podcasts? No, never. It's pretty rude. She said that she's reading out each question before answering it. So she's going through every one of them, reading it and then answering it. 23, do you take any drugs? I only take Tylenol. And 24, I'm flexible. You know, I don't work. I did not sign up for any newsletters from Mr. Trump. And I don't even have Snapchat. The judge says, all right, lady, listen, you don't need to read the questions, okay? Just give us your answers, okay? Let's speed this up here. She said, okay, okay, well, I've never read any of those books, and I give my assurances that I'm not going to discuss this case with anyone. Says, thank you. All right, you're done. How about you, ma'am? Uh, 706, another woman. Says, I live in Hell's Kitchen. I'm from the Bronx originally. I work for some organization. What do I like to do? TV on the couch is my favorite hobby. And I like the Yankees. I used to be an amateur boxer. Ooh, okay. I've been assaulted a couple of times, probably the real kind, not the Bergdorf kind, and I had my cell phone stolen. I might have read The Art of the Deal when I was younger. Any reason I can't be fair? No. Next one, 644, another woman. Well, I've thought about it, and I don't think I could be impartial, right? So she says, yesterday, any reason anybody cannot participate? Her hands, you know, down. No, I'm good. You sure? Any reason you can't be fair? Nope, I'm good. Thinks about it the next day, comes back. No, I hate this dude. I'm out of here. All right, your excuse. Next, 616. Um, I work in IT. You know, I could help you fix those microphones. Shout out to the IT guy. Man, we love our IT guys. Man, they fix everything. I work in IT. Your microphones uh, have some loose cabling there. Let me go get my uh, tool bag. I'll fix all these for you. Click, 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 click all these things. We, it would be useful. Can you turn on the live stream too while you're there? Just uh, here, just give, you know, I'll give you the RTMP numbers, okay? He says, I live in Inwood. I work somewhere. I really don't use Facebook. I, I listen to one podcast, which is called The Order of Man. Hmm, sounds interesting. Next, 447. This is another man. He says, well, I work for a large hospitality group. We've got 6,000 employees. And my wife is a grant coordinator. Hobbies? Well, running. Well, watching TV. You know, mostly YouTube. My man. My wife is a lawyer, but she does not practice. I follow the White House on Instagram, so I got Mr. Trump's posts. Next, 520. A woman. She says, I live in the Gramercy neighborhood. I read the New York Times, the Post, the Wall Street Journal, Fox News. I have an Instagram account, but I only use it for fashion and style. Don't really have a significant amount of followers either. Any reason you can't be fair? No. 624. A woman says, I work for a publicly traded fintech company with a certain number of employees. I like to take my sons to Nick games and we have Rubik's cube solving contests. Someone tried to hack my 401k one time and that was pretty irritating. 445 is a man. He lives in the financial district. Is originally from Europe. Shout out to our friends there. We founded an investment boutique firm for startups. I traded derivatives trading in London. I am married to adult children and one stepsons. And I don't know what he does for a living. 445 says, I don't read much news except for Y Combinator. Judge says, what? Y Combinator, Judge. It's for startups. I listen, to, I listen back to back to NPR and Fox News. That's interesting. They're remarkably different. That's true. My grandfather was a commissioner at a local municipality. And as to question 19, this is the question, any have a, a, a close relative related to a conviction? Yeah, I did. I had a relative who was close. It was difficult, but the system seemed to do well. 445 is here. A question. Do you know who Mark Pomerantz is? No, I, I don't know who Mark Pomerantz is. Okay. Now, 483 is another woman. She didn't give her number either. Just started talking, but Inner City Press had it. He sa she says, I was in the music industry. 
and I was on the management side. Now I'm at a large educational institution. I'm not married, no children. I live alone with my dog, I like to watch hockey, and I'm on the board of my synagogue. I listen to the New York Times, mostly NPR. Now I'd like to attend Cedars in Jersey both Monday and Tuesday. Okay, would ending at 2 p.m. work for you if we ended Monday and Tuesday for Passover? She says, yeah, that would work great. And any reason you can't be fair? No. 647 is a man, says, I'm a lifelong New Yorker. I was a teacher for a location for a school. I advocate for funding for the C-U-N-Y. Not going to pronounce that one. Six, 647 comes in and says, Citizens United is the law of the land. But I do favor that everything should be made public. Talking about, I guess, campaign finance. Now, can I jump to 26, says the woman. 800 is next. She, she, I'm, I'm going to skip all of these. How about number 26? I don't think I can be impartial. And she's, okay, well, you can step aside. So she's gone, right? So she, again, made the first cut, comes back. Not the second cut. Next, 456. This is a man. He says, I live in the Upper East Side with my wife. I like to go outside, you know, anything but sitting in front of a computer all day. I signed up for Facebook when I was in high school, but I don't use it. Wall Street Journal, NPR, their podcast. I think it's pre-recorded though. And I was in private wealth management. Can you be fair? Sure. 561's a man. He says, let me say, I'm in an investment fund that's into a podcast company that produces Maya Culpa. That's Michael Cohen's podcast. My fault, right? Mercon says, okay, thanks for letting us know. You may proceed. 561 says, well, I'm with a private equity fund. I'm a partner. We have about so many number of employees and I don't have any kids. Mainly I read the New York Times. If I put on the news, it's MSNBC. Some thefts, including home burglary. I voluntarily work, a lot of, lot of burglaries, right? A lot of people have been robbed, mugged, uh, assaulted. It's New York, man, it's crazy. And they're like, what? but Trump's spreadsheets were really bad, though. We got to go get them. I voluntarily worked for Get Out the Vote during the Clinton campaign. Oh, that's great. She's perfect. I attended the Women's March, and I don't, and there's no reason I can't, you know, any reason you can't be fair or impartial. She says, no, no, I can be totally fair. I only watch MSNBC, literally volunteered for Hillary Clinton, and attend the Women's March. But no, I can be totally fair crazy. I live in Chinatown, says 557, another woman. Says, I live in Chinatown, high school diploma. 596 is another woman. Going fast now. She lives uptown. Before that, in New Jersey and some other part of Tennessee. Now, I got a BS in mechanical engineering. Married, no children. I practice yoga. I use Google for my search engine capabilities. And I have an X account. And I listen to the random pod says, I listen to talk radio when I'm down south and I have to drive a lot. I have several close friends who are felons. I'm good with the time as long as we get to eat. Any reason you can't be fair? No. Judge says, thank you. She says, you're welcome, Judge. <laughs> she, just, she had a personality, that one, didn't she? Of course she did. 588 is a woman. Says, my father is a good personal friend of a former governor. And I have a BA in psychology says, I walk in Central Park. I get my news from Bloomberg, the terminal at work. And which is, you know, Bloomberg, a Bloomberg terminal it must be in finance. I listen to the daily, but you know, it's a little too depressing for me. Says I'm Jewish, but at 2 p.m. on Monday and Tuesday, that would be fine. Michael Cohen's son works at my company. I could work with him, but I haven't yet. Wow. So they were so works with the star witnesses son. Amazing. The son yeah, works with Michael Cohen's son at his company. Incredible. Now, I have a relative. So I don't know what happened to that guy. 651 says, I have a relative. This is a man who is a court officer in this room. It's like, what the heck? Did they just go like through their like uh, contacts list? They're like, hey, we need some jurors. Get Michael Cohen's contact list and Stormy Daniels and this court officers too. Let's put them all in one room. I have a relative who is a court officer in this room. I live in Midtown. I used to work for this organization. 
Now, I'm not married. I've never been married. No kids. Trying to find a wife in my spare... In my... Trying to find a wife in my spare time. So I can stay as long as you like. I'll listen to your instructions and do whatever you want. 468's a woman. Says, I live in Chelsea. I'm from Florida. I'm a corporate lawyer. So is my husband. I do leverage finance and markets. We have lawyer friends. I have an uncle who served prison time in prison. And I was young. I don't really know the details. Right? These lawyers are dangerous because, you know, the high power, big firm law firms are ultra left. 468. We got her. 620s here. She says, another woman. I'm divorced. I have three boys. I do whatever my kids want me to do in my spare time. So whatever they want. 662 is another woman. She says, you know, you guys keep calling me back for jury service, but I already did time in prison. So I don't know why you keep calling me back. I'm like, well, we need you. You're the muscle. You're going to, you know, you're going to get into the holdouts who want to acquit Trump. So the judge is like, okay, please approach. Like, okay. After a sidebar, 662 says, sorry, I cried. So she goes up to the judge. They have a conversation. Sorry, I cried, Your Honor. I used to be a dental hygienist, but now I can't do that legally because of my felon record. I have a child in the U.S. Army and another one wants to be a politician or a lawyer. Do I have a hobby? Yeah, I FaceTime my kids and I actually have three grandchildren now, but I don't watch the news. I had a long time, so I try to keep it chill now. I was a victim of domestic abuse as well. Now, she was in prison, apparently. She talks about this. She says, Catholic is what our background is. I don't go to Trump's rallies and I don't know anyone who does. I'm a firm believer that when people do something, they should be accountable. It's probably from my experience in prison. 763 is a woman. She lives in Battery Park City. Said, I did not, I did participate in the Women's March, perfect, and posted it on Instagram. I listened to podcasts about entrepreneurship and reality TV. I was mugged when I was younger. Uh, no reason I can't be impartial. They take a break in 10 minutes and says, uh, Mercon comes out. Says, we've been in touch with the commissioner of jurors. She is disqualified today, and I'd like to bring her in and explain it to her. Any questions about that? Saying the record of the sidebar will be sealed. So she calls the juror back up to 662 and says, you know, I have been in touch with the commissioner of jurors, okay? The mere fact that you did time should not disqualify you. You can get a certificate. And she says, thank you. Uh, and she turns to the judge and says, good luck. There's laughter in the courtroom. So she's out of here. Other jurors come back in. They bring them back in. Now it's the prosecutor's time to question them. Now the lawyers will question you, ladies and gentlemen, jurors. Miss Madam Government, you're up. Her name's Susan Hoffinger. She comes up. She says, oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. You know, they're buttering them up. Says, okay, this case is not about Donald Trump being a former president. Okay, and it's not, not about running for office again. The question here today is not about politics. The question is, ladies and gentlemen, could you be fair? How about you, 441? I have no objection. You won't prejudge a person before what they've of what they've previous said, previously said. He says, well, the burden of proof is subjective to each juror, right? She says, well, there is only one burden of proof. If someone wrote a book or did a podcast critical of Mr. Trump, would you listen to that? Yes, I would. 588 now starts breaking down. Oh my gosh. She starts bu busting up into tears. She's sobbing her eyeballs out. She's sitting down. They're like getting ready to come to her, right? Can you be fair? Can you be fair? Prosecutor, can you be fair? She's like, ah, bust out. I feel so nervous and anxious. She's sobbing. I thought I could do this. I wouldn't want someone on my jury that was this anxious. I'm sorry if I've wasted your time. The judge is like, oh, calm down, madam. Come on up here. Come up to the sidebar. Relax. Talks to her for a minute. Witness is excused. <laughs> Juror is excused. Hoffinger, the prosecutor, says, oh, gosh, I didn't even ask you anything yet. Golly. All right, we're going to be showing you a lot of documents here today, ladies and gentlemen. 445, sir, you're someone who's pled guilty in the past. Will you keep listening to the documents? 
He says, well, people are complicated and what you're doing here is important. And so I'm not going to prejudge anything. So if we do our job and prove his guilt, what will our, your verdict be, sir? Guilty. And if we didn't prove it, not guilty. Hmm. Good answers. Smart. How about you? Next juror. She says, well, if you prove it, I'll find him guilty. And if not, not guilty. So guilty then. Yes, guilty. She says, thank you. So then she sits down. She does that little bit for a bit and we come back. Now, Trump's lawyer comes up. Her name is Susan Nicholas. She says, ladies and gentlemen here, I appreciate your candor here with the court and the tribunal today. We are trying to understand biases, okay? And what you heard from that prosecutor over there from the government, what she said was just her opinion. Do you have any problem with putting aside her opinion that she tried to cram down your throats? If witnesses have committed perjury and a juror who read out the questions, the one previously, she said, well, it depends, it depends. And someone says, could I approach the, the bench? And the sidebar comes out and somebody else went, can I approach please too? And this other juror says, through this line of questioning, I'm getting the same anxiety and doubt. Judge nukes that person too. Just losing them. Cracks again. Excused. So defense attorney necklace for Trump says, to a juror whose employer, they ask about the employer, what do you think? Could you set aside those biases? Said, so, well, if a person said that they were hurt in Rikers, but they're on Facebook at Coachella, you know, moving around, I'd have to save the clip. What? Okay, but you were at a women's march, right? Yeah. And it was anti-Trump, wasn't it? No, I would say it's not anti-Trump. It's about women's solidarity, right? Remember we talked about this earlier. No, that's why they asked, are you anti-Trump? No, clearly I'm not anti-Trump. I'm just pro save the planet, pro women, pro anti-racism, not anti-Trump, whatever, right? So that's how they squeeze them in here. But you don't like Trump's policies. Well, I don't really know what they are. Okay, so what were you doing there in women's solidarity? What was that for? Who were you fighting against in solidarity against, huh? Well, what's your view of President Trump? The guy who listens to the Order of Man, the podcast. He says, it doesn't matter. Well, you're gonna hear that President Trump was unfaithful. Would that impact your decision since you listened to the Order of Man? No, it wouldn't. Another juror says, well, I saw Trump as just a normal person like me. And how about you, juror 624? What's your opinion of President Trump? no strong opinions. And you, 445? Well, I have, four, I have five answers for you. Person, politician, businessman. Almost sounds like that mind test that Trump did. Camera, dog, person, elevator. I don't know him. He's a family man. You see his results. It's tricky with the Republican Party. I like low taxes. This guy's great. I like less regulations for startups too. But the Republicans, you know, putting religion into people's lives and women's bodies, you know, is where we part ways. All right. So there was something you didn't want to discuss though. He says, well, I'm okay discussing it at the sidebar. And so we'll take it up there. So he's a small businessman. Now, Nicholas continues to 647. How about you? What's your opinion of President Trump? They say, well, there's been so much thrown around, you know, I try to ignore it. Have you made any social media posts about Trump? I don't remember. I mainly post about schools. How about four, five, six? That's a pretty nice number. Are you going to play it today? She says, I have friends on both sides. Are you going to play it straight maybe or something like that? Well, she says, I have friends on both sides. So I can, sure. Now, how about you next juror? Have you posted anything about Trump? Says, well, in 2016, I think I probably did. And probably about the insurrection. Eh, that guy's got to go. I used to see Trump Tower as a symbol when I came from New Jersey. Now it's a symbol of lies against people. And I'm reasonable and fair. Okay, buddy boy. Okay. 
you're reasonable. You might want to go look up the definition of an insurrection then or watch some of our videos. Judge Murkan says, jurors, I'll ask you to step outside. Thank you for all answering the questions. And now we got some decisions to make. So then they leave and the jurors are now out of the courtroom. Judge Murkan is addressing the attorneys, says, now as to seat two, are there any challenges? Seat two is the alternate seat two, is the alternate two. How about seat three? Any objections? And Trump's defense says, yeah, we object to seat three for sure. She said that Trump enables homophobic and racist comments. Hmm. Typical MSNBC viewer. And the prosecutor says, well, but she said she doesn't hold him responsible for his followers. So she called him homophobic and racist, but is not responsible for those comments. And the judge says, okay, bring her in. She says, okay, walk us through what you said about Trump. So she takes the seat, juror three. She posts something like, well, his followers feel emboldened by his rhetoric. Now there were speeches like the both sides thing. You know, does that make sense? She's like, I was upset about him because of the, that's, I think that's a Charlottesville hoax is probably what she's talking about. Remember the fine people hoax where they said Trump said that there were fine people on both sides and they're like, oh, he's talking about like white supremacist Nazis. He called Nazis fine people. It's like, that's not what he said at all. You guys all took it out. Of, read the transcript. It's clear as day. But Biden is still regurgitating that. So this poor woman has had her mind brainwashed by the MSNBC propaganda. And, he's, and so she says his followers feel emboldened. So it's followers. I don't hold it against him. Does that make sense? The judge says, could you separate things? Oh, yeah, clearly I could. And how about the boxing community? You, you were talking about the boxing community? Well, she said it felt like people were emboldened to judge me as a woman in that space. You know, there were issues in that community, in the boxing community. I live in Hell's Kitchen. It's a very progressive space. So she leaves. Well, thanks for clarifying some of that. Nicholas says, Your Honor, we got to excuse her. She feels President Trump emboldened discrimination against her personally. Says, well, I think the safer course is just a grant excusal for cause. We should just get rid of her. Okay, so seat five becomes alternate three. Seat eight becomes four. How about seat 11? Defense says, yeah, strike for cause. Why? Well, he posted about that massive anti-Trump rally by the United Nations. They show the post. Judge looks at it. He says, well, what's this post? He says, the post says, enormous crowds, great signs. I love New York. A sign contains profanity on here. Another sign, well, he, he posted my sentiment exactly. He's like, it's a great sign. He's like, it's a great, enormous crowds, great signs. I love New York. He's like, I kind of agree with this. What's, the, what's wrong with this, says the judge. He says, well, you could bring him in to question him. The judge says, fine, bring him in. B647, you come in. Now, judge says, now you, didn't, you said you didn't remember posting some of these comments. The lawyers found some. So I'm going to show you some that we dug up, see if you remember them. They show them to him. He says, well, yeah, I guess they're mine. I mean, I don't remember this. I did go to the rally. The rally was by my house and I just took some pictures. Do you have a particular interest in the signs? He says, well, I thought they were interesting. And you said you live right down the street from there. You live at one United Nations Plaza. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the rally was in the neighborhood. And so the government says, yeah, it was in his neighborhood. He's a New Yorker and a teacher. So it was a New York moment. He just went outside there. So he's not biased at all. So he leaves. Judge Mercan says, well, he told us he thought it was a women's rally, but he tagged it as a massive anti-Trump rally. And so we've come too far in this case to take a chance. So I'm going to grant a challenge for cause on that. Judge boots him. Now, next juror, look at his tweets, says Nicholas. Look at these. Next juror comes out. He says he wrote that Trump is an egomaniacal incompetent. The juror wrote that I actually believe that he is actually the devil. Okay, juror's like, no, I literally think he is Satan incarnate, literally. I posted that. She says, okay, bring her in. Bring in 561. She comes in. Uh, ma'am, you said you didn't post anything. The lawyers found something. Are, th are these your posts? She says, well, these are not my posts. Are you sure? It says you wrote that Trump is the devil. 
Do you still feel that, madam? 561 says, uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah, more or less I do, yeah. So this woman, okay, already made it this far. She didn't excuse herself from the first round. So she thinks Trump is the devil, is trying to get onto the jury panel, gets caught, lies about her posts, gets caught. They bring her in here. She finally comes clean, okay? She was very close to being on the jury. They didn't find those posts. If she was smart enough to delete them or you know make her account private or whatever, may not have found them. So it's curious, right? These people are telling us that they're very fair and impartial, that they can make it through. They you know raise their hands and get on through the next one, but boom, then they're busted. Weird. Next one, 561. So he says, okay, look, she's excused for cause, clearly. And so 556 is alternate five. What about seat 18? Prosecution nukes that guy. Seat 18's gone. Seat 20 becomes alternate number six. And so, boy, sounds like we've got a full panel. Judge says, okay, you're peremptory, you're done. You're out of peremptories, you're out of peremptories. We're good. Bring them back in. Clerk brings them back in, jurors pile in. Okay, they say alternate two, you're B44. Alternate three, you're B616, and so on. Is this satisfactory to the people? Government says yes. To the defense, yes. Jury is sworn in. Now the trial will start back up 9.30 on Monday with this jury listening to everything. And this was reported to us by Inner City Press, Matthew Russell Lee reporting, of course, be sure to follow him everywhere you see on the screen. He also has his links in our description, wherever you're watching this below, so you can go follow him and support him and thank him for the tremendous reporting that he is doing. But we have our jury, and it's always surprising to see how many people have been squeezing through the initial round, trying to squeak themselves on and then they get busted. And what if they never got caught? Well, they would have been on there in the panel. So New York is now underway. Opening arguments will be starting here on Monday. We're gonna be covering it in depth, my friends, going through the X scripts just like we've done here. So thank you for subscribing and joining us as we do. Also, don't forget to check out some of the links down in our description below. Places like watchingthewatchers.locals.com is our members only community. We do streams in the morning, six days a week, including on Saturdays. We'd love to have you join us. It's a great way to meet new people get some extra content and some other things that we can't talk about or get into here. And it's a great way to support our show as well. So thanks for doing that. Watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We'll see you over there and back here on the next one. All right, now we're not done yet, but we're back from lunch and the jurors break for lunch for the weekend and the attorneys come back because we have some stuff to attend to before the trial starts. And so let's get right to it. Donald Trump smeared in court, Trump trial day four. We know the person behind this is Matthew Colangelo, the same guy who worked for Obama before going over to Letitia's office to then prosecute Trump, then left Tish, went to Joe Biden's DOJ, worked there to create more onslaught against Trump in the other cases, then left Biden's DOJ and went to Alvin Bragg's office and is now prosecuting Trump there. Well, he submitted, in New York, they call it a Sandoval motion, which is alleging prior bad acts that could be used against Trump if he decides to testify. And we covered this in detail, so we'll just fast forward through it. But I wanted to share with you, right, this guy worked on many of these cases, including the Tish James case, Matthew Colangelo. And he says, we should use this case against Trump, E. Jean Carroll, that was by Roberta Kaplan. Trump versus Clinton, Trump Corporation that he brought. We got more Tish James cases and all of this submitted by Matthew Colangelo. This is a smear list. And as we've talked about, it spirals, it compounds. It's like a snowball running down a mountain. They start one fake case and then they say in every other case, Trump was found guilty of grabbing him by the purse. And so we should be able to tell every juror about that, right? Every time Trump gets penalized for violating the gag order for anger on like they want to talk about that tell the jury about that so they can make this case that this guy's just like a legal monster he's just out there breaking the law every which way he can't wake up without breaking the law right he's a menace 
to society. And so that is the background. We read the full thing in detail, but in the afternoon session on trial day four, Inner City Press is reporting what happened with those arguments. And of course, you can follow him at Inner City Press. Subscribe to his Substack as I have. We're back in the afternoon. Trial day four. All rise. Again, this judge. Oh, gosh. All right. Per judge Juan Mercon. All right. Please be seated. All right. Before we begin, says the judge, anything that we need to address? Prosecutor government stands up. He says, uh, Your Honor, before the Sandoval hearing, we moved to seal four exhibits, including Michael Cohen's contacts. Trump's attorney, Emil Bove, stands up. He says, OK, fine. But they're also trying to seal trial exhibits. And there's some loud banging in the courtroom. Bang, 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 bang. What the heck is that? Nobody knows what it is. Maybe the dude lit himself on fire outside. We don't know. So Judge Mercon tells everyone, hey, sit down. Okay, I'm signing the order. And Emil Bove says, Your Honor, hang on a minute. We object to brag the government raising the issues in their Sandoval notice. They start with Judge Angeron, okay? They cannot be used to cross-examine Trump if he comes in and testify. We read this full filing. Now, that case is subject to a stay by the First Department, okay? We're already appealing all of this. And so they shouldn't get to use it because it's not a final judgment. Thanks for playing. Prosecutor number two, nameless, who cares? Justice Angeron says, Your Honor, found persistent illegality. You see how this happens? So they just, all they need is one fake useless judge to come up with a fake verdict, and then they can just use that in every other case. It's squarely in the wheel, the prosecutor, it's squarely in the wheelhouse of impeaching of a witness. And Trump's lawyer mentioned a stay, but that's only a partial stay. And normally, this is about criminal convictions in Sandoval, we know, and this is civil, and so it's less likely to be misunderstood, right? So, like, we normally don't even do this. But because it's civil, they'll understand it. Now, Trump's lawyer, Emil, says, well, the second one, Your Honor, is Justice Angeron's gag order, the second one on the list, and it's a contempt finding. And so if that's true, why can't we impeach Michael Cohen with Judge Furman's findings that he's a perjurer? Government, he says, well, how about you, government? He says, well, the defendant lied to Angeron in a courthouse 200 yards from here, which was also a rigged case brought by Bigfoot Letitia. Trump's lawyer, Bove, says, okay, fine. I'll move on to the next issue. It's Judge Angeron's finding. This one's way too remote. It says, well, no, it's not. Angeron fined him for $5,000 because he was talking about his law clerk, Allison Greenfield, who was sitting on the bench right next to Angeron. And I don't know why they were doing that. And the bigger question in my mind has always been, why did they move the cameras away from them? If they were seated on the same level and there's you know, no separation between them, and you can't see what they're doing, and they're up on a bench, so you, you, you can't look up and really see where their hands are. We have a lot of concerns about what they're working on when the cameras aren't on them. It's just an open question. I don't know what they're doing. Why they move the cameras? So it's strange that 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 you know it would be happening. And so Trump called that out, and they find him for it because again, they find you and gag you when you speak the truth. Trump's lawyer says, "Okay, well, let's go to the next one. How about now the Carroll case?" We dispute those events happened, okay? We don't even think they happened and they're way too far back. Now, there are moving parts about what the government's case in chief will look like. We have questions about whether the Access Hollywood tape will be admitted. What is their theory of the case? We don't even know yet. No one knows. Government says, well, Your Honor, sorry. No, the exclusion of impeachment topics, if we can't impeach Trump on this, it could distort our whole process. And we have to talk about these cases. Our issues are related to defamation in 2019 and 2020. The statements were false, the jury found. And so he's guilty. He's liable for those. So next up, they say, okay, Trump's lawyer says, well, the next is Trump versus Clinton in Florida. This is another disputed judicial finding. So why should this be used to smear him in, in this case? Like they want to parade all of this in front of the jury, right? Everything bad that has ever happened to you, they try to get it in front of them. Judge says, well, the court said that this lawsuit should not have been filed and it was brought in bad faith. And so that shows your, you know, your character for truthfulness. And this is within Sandoval because it's bad faith. And so you're, they're allowed to talk about it. He says, Your Honor, it has a compounding effect, okay? There's another case named Bennett. He says, well, I'm not very good with case names, so just explain it to me. 
Well, there's then people versus the Trump organization. As your honor knows, Miss Hoffinger, the government, said this case is not about Donald Trump. And so we're also appealing that one. And the government said, hey, Judge Murkan, you handled that trial, okay? Because it's the same people, right? It's the same uh, individuals involved in a lot of this stuff. Judge Kaplan, Roberta Kaplan. We know we've got here uh, Juan Murkan presiding on multiple trials, including this one. Same thing with Matthew Colangelo, bouncing around from office to office. So you've already heard that case, so you know what happened there. So probably admit that one too. And then Trump's lawyer says, well, there's also James versus the Trump Foundation. Now that was based on a judge's urging and says that was not any admission at all. So you can't include that line item against us. Government says, well, the parties left open to the judge the question of whether Trump violated his fiduciary duty. So the judge says, okay, okay. Thanks for going through all of those. Is there anything else on Sandoval here? No? Okay, you say these are all on appeal. Are you arguing that that means that they can't see these under Sandoval? He says, well, I'm not making that argument categorically, no, but they shouldn't see them because they are on appeal. Well, he says, I'm going to reserve decision. You'll have my decision in the morning. I think he'll let them all, all in, and then he'll say, you can address it on cross. So they'll, on redirect, right? So if Trump takes a stand, they cross him with those. You can address it on redirect. Are those on appeal? Yeah, oh, they are, okay. So Mercan says, and this is amazing. So yesterday, we went through the margin madman, Todd Blanche's motion. You remember that from yesterday's show. Absolutely insane what he did in his word processor. He took that margin. I think it's under 0.5. I don't know. You know that death warning you get in Microsoft Word when you squeeze those margins too small? It's like, are you out of your freaking mind? Do you know what you're about to do? You're like, I, I'm doing it anyways. Leave me alone. Boom. Well, he did that yesterday, and he sent in these pre-motion letters, tiny font, ultra small margins, and we're like, wow, this guy's out of control. Absolute madman. So he submitted it, and now the judge wants to talk about it. He says, all right, I want to address your margins and your pre-motion letters. He says, on Michael Cohen's plea to the, to the federal elections crimes, he says, the people have yet to respond. Now the governor, the government says, Steinglass, he says, well, we don't need to, we don't need to respond to every pre-motion letter with another pre-motion letter. So that's why we didn't respond to it. And the judge says, well, you know, I'm tired of all these letters with tiny margins, okay? Todd, defense cannot continue to submit pre-motion letters asking the court to reconsider each and every decision. He's so mad, right? And we were, we were making fun of this yesterday. Like this judge must be furious yesterday. He was. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, he's so hot right now. And like Todd's like doing his job as a lawyer, right? He's like, okay, I have to file my, I have to file my motions. Judge is pissed. Now at some point, at some point, he's like, he's got margins coming out of his earballs. He's like, at some point you have to accept my rulings. Okay. Opening statements are on Monday. The trial is starting already. Now the people have a right to, to refer to what is on the Access Hollywood tape, so they can talk about it. They can refer to that tape. Todd Blanche says, Your Honor, the leak of the tape caused changes in preparing for the debate for Michael Cohen, and so we asked for clarification on that. Well, he said, well, we'll see. We'll get there. They get access. They can talk about the tape. Now, I don't think it's play the tape, but it's to refer to what is on the tape, right? So it's not play it, just refer to it. Trump's attorney, Nicholas Susan, stands up, says, Your Honor, we'd like the name of the first witness if we're going to be starting opening arguments on Monday. We're going to get right into witnesses that afternoon, I'd expect. So they have a list of 20 witnesses. We'd like the name of the first witness. Who are they calling? He says, well, you're not going to delay the trial. If you know the name of the witness, you're going to file something. And the government says, we're not going to give you the names until Sunday night because Trump will tweet about it. And if Trump tweets about this witness, we will not give you another name again. Now, judge says, Your Honor, the con Judge Mercon tells somebody, says, okay, by the way, the contempt hearing is on Tuesday at 9.30. Sir, sit down. And then Judge Mercon leaves. Now Trump walks down the aisle. He taps the wooden barrier as he passes.
Trump walks out of the courtroom contempt hearing 9.30 a.m. on Tuesday, where we'll see if the judge wants to throw him in jail or fine him several thousand dollars. After the day's events, the president came out. And here's what he said in the aftermath of another insane day in a ridiculous kangaroo court. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, we just had another hearing, and the trial starts on Monday, which is long before a lot of people thought the judge wants this to, to go as fast as possible. Uh, that's for his reasons, not for my reasons. And this is really a concerted witch hunt, very simple. Everything you heard in there, this is a witch hunt by numerous judges, Democrat judges. You take a look at it, and Gorin is a whack job. What he did was a disgrace. It's being reviewed by the appellate division, and I hope they do justice, because everybody's looking, and nobody, no business is coming into the city, none whatsoever. They're looking at that case. That case is a threat to democracy, frankly, what took place with the AG, a crooked AG, Letitia James, who campaigned in the fact who campaigned on the fact that I'm going to get Trump, I'm going to get Trump. That's all she said for two years. And it's people don't want to see this stuff. We have violent criminals all over the streets of New York and nothing happens. So even when they catch him, they let him go. No bail, no bail whatsoever. So this is just a concerted witch hunt, whether it's Judge Kaplan with a person I have no idea until they called and said they're suing us. I had no idea who this person was, or this judge, or if you look at Angora, where he said that Mar-a-Lago, which if it was worth a billion or a billion and a half dollars, he said it was worth $18 million because that suited his narrative. But what what's happening in this city, and Harley. all over the country, but what's happening in particular in this city, some are very good, by the way, some are very fair. Those are really the cities that are thriving. But what's happening here with the judicial system is an outrage and all over the world they're watching it and all over the world they're saying it this is a giant witch hunt to try and hurt a campaign that's beating the worst president in history biden's the worst president in the history of our country beating him by a lot and this is the only way they think they can win but it's not going to work thank you very much all right that's the president are your lawyers doing a good job Johnson. Johnson, fire questions and more. So that's Trump. Busy day. We got a full jury selected and we now know that they're going to do everything they can to smear him using the other fake cases as a jumping off point, right? Find one problem, get one judge somewhere to issue a bad order, issue a gag, issue an adverse ruling, say something bad. And then they can use it indefinitely and other judges will say, well, another court found it. Angeron, one of the most illegitimate people ever to be in law, is now a citation in a litany of prior bad acts that they'll try to use. And so we're going to be here continuing to cover this, my friends, as we talked about, as Mr. President talked about. We will be back in Monday, on Monday, for oral arguments and opening arguments, my goodness. And we're going to hopefully see you here. And so thank you for subscribing and liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. Thanks for inviting a friend or family member to come over here and join us as this trial unfolds. There's going to be a lot to attend to. We'd love to see you here. We'd also love to have you join us at our members only community, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We do extra member only streams in the morning and on Saturdays. We stream a bunch of stuff that we can't get to here. We'd love to have you join us. Come meet some amazing people, have some fun. And we'll see you over there and back here on the next one. All right, my friends. Now, we've got one final segment on the day. And I want to share this with you. It's probably going to be rage-inducing, but we have to know who these people are. This is, it just gets wilder every single day. Democrats are now plotting to remove Donald Trump's Secret Service protection so that they can throw him in jail. They're doing it by congressional legislation Benny Thompson, you remember him, the same person who was on the J6 committee with Liz Cheney, now introducing this legislation, and it's called the Disgrace Act. It is to strip away Secret Service protection if you've been convicted of a crime that requires jail. 
and they have a whole fact sheet about this that they say applies to Trump. It's specifically for him. And a lot of people will say, isn't this ex post facto? Isn't this like applying a law retroactively to someone? That's a problem. Or isn't this like a bill of attainder? This is Congress or a legislature just legislating a penalty. They say it's not. They say it's just a benefit. We're just removing a benefit. It's not an actual criminal penalty or anything like that. And so it doesn't apply. It doesn't count. So they're talking about this, very excited about it. They want him in jail, my friends. They are considering doing it. Here is what the actual legislation looks like. Now, this is from Tom Thompson. Benny Thompson, we called him Fishing Benny Thompson because he just sent letters out from everybody. He says, this is HR, whatever it'll be when it drops. The legislation would be to terminate secret service protection for felons. Isn't this fun? Here is how it would work. It would be to terminate this if it is passed. They say this act may be cited as the denying infinite security and government resources allocated towards convicted and extremely dishonorable former protectees act. You see how clever these people are? I wonder how long that took them. I wonder if they have like little magnets on the refrigerator and they're just moving these words around because they cobbled that all together. And if you add that up, it's an acronym. It says disgraced. Wow. Great job, Benny. What a genius. So denying infinite security, that's the DIS, G for government resource. Okay, got it. Disgraced. Well done. Former Protectees Act, right? So it's, it's, they really worked hard so, so that they could put that word in there. Now it's a very simple resolution, simple bit of legislation. Very simple. All it says here is we're just going to modify the U.S. Code. 3056A 30, is now amended. We get rid of the word striking, we get rid of declined, and we insert declined. Protectee, protection is authorized. The protection authorized shall terminate, right? So you are authorized, but it shall terminate for any person upon sentencing following conviction for a federal or state offense that is punishable for a term of imprisonment of at least one year, okay? So if we finish this, trial and Angeron uh, or Mercon says that Trump is now going to prison for one year. If this were a law, Secret Service protection would be removed and he would go into custody. See, how, see what they want? These people are lunatics. They have no idea what they're playing with. And maybe that's what they want, right? Maybe this is the whole point. They want something like this to happen. So if they do that, right, what's the country going to say in response? Don't think it's going to go well, but they are serious about this. This is what the fact sheet looks like. So here is ranking member committee on Homeland Security, Benny Thompson. He's saying they're allowed to do this and it's totally constitutional. Here's what it, they say. It says the US government has long recognized the need to protect former presidents and other people from harm. Since 1901, the Secret Service has been responsible for that. Now, periodically, Congress has reformed the Secret Service protection, often in response to exigent circumstances. So Congress modifies what Secret Service does. For example, protection was expanded to major party presidential nominees after R Senator RFK was killed. Former President Trump's unprecedented uh, 91 felony charges across the country have created a new exigency. Congress must address this to ensure that Secret Service protection does not interfere with the administration of justice. So they call it the disgraced former protectees act would terminate secret service protection for anyone else who otherwise qualifies for it. Now under current law, secret service protection is authorized for some current former high level officials and their families. Now current law does not contemplate how that protection would occur or whether it should occur if they're sentenced to prison. Now as a result, current law may serve as an impediment to actually executing justice. And it could present logistical difficulties for the Secret Service and the prisons. And so this bill would remove the potential for conflicting lines of authority within prisons and allow judges to weigh the sentencing of individuals without having to factor in the logistical concerns of convicts with Secret Service protection. It's like insane. But is this bill a violation of the Constitution? Right, All of our... Uh, 
radar flags went up. Wait a minute. Sort of sounds like ex post facto, no? They say no, no, no. The Supreme Court in Fleming versus Nestor suggested that there could be situations where the termination of a benefit, right? It's not an actual right. It's a benefit where it may raise ex post facto concerns. However, such a law would have to be shown to have been for an unlawful and punitive purpose. So SCOTUS is saying, they're saying, hey, we kind of have a little bit of an uphill purpose, but this bill is not punitive. It's just the removal of a benefit neutrally. The purpose of this bill, right, is not to go punish Trump, no. Because if it's punitive, then it sort of is like a criminal thing, right? Because we don't want, that's what criminal law is, is to punish you for misconduct. So if something is punitive, then that might be uh, you know, analogous to a criminal law. But no, it's just general removal. It's not targeting Trump. The purpose of this bill is to hand off inmate protection all we want to do is just make Secret Service no longer responsible. We're going to give inmate protection to prison authorities and not involve the Secret Service. Further, the removal of Secret Service protection does not change the criminal statutes or alter the penalty for the crime. So Trump would already be punished anyways. And just to be clear, right, these people are so whacked. Like, it's not for punitive purposes, obviously. But would this bill apply to former President Trump if he's convicted of a felony? Of course it would. They put it in here. This measure would apply to former President Trump. It would also apply to all Secret Service protectees convicted and sentenced under felony charges. So you see, they're doing this right now. They want to put him in prison. These people are maniacs. And you might be sitting here saying, Rob, come on, this is like a long shot, right? Like there's no way. That's what many people were saying years ago before four indictments dropped before they tried to drop him off the ballots now we are in a precarious position with the house of representatives and if they take control of the gavel if the democrats have the gavel we are in a very precarious position either they remove him from the ballots under the anderson 90 scotus precedent via congressional legislation we know what they do in the senate they don't even hold trials we see that Alejandro Mayorkas is clearly above the law, along with the rest of the Democrats, Joe Biden and others. So they will do whatever it takes. They'll stab their own family in the, in the throat and endorse their political opponent because the blue blood runs deeper than the family blood. These people are whacked. So if they get this gavel back and Mercon convicts Trump, watch them pass this before the next election. So we are in a precarious position, and I know how upsetting Mike Johnson is, believe me. But this, this is like one chess move away from actually being a realistic thing. Couple things need to happen. And it's Benny Thompson, ranking member, Homeland Security. They've been screaming about insurrection for years. You think they wouldn't do this? I think they'd do it in a heartbeat if they could. So they're already talking about stuff like this, right? This is what their constituency sounds like over on CNN. These people are lunatics. This was clipped for us by Kyle Becker. Shout out. Please follow him at Kyle N.A. Becker. He sent this one in, which was a good summary from CNN. Listen to these lunatics who are wanting Trump to go into custody like now. Panel's back. Uh, Elliot, you know, I was talking to Joey Jackson yesterday and he said, you know, after that Truth Social post where he was quoting Jesse Waters mm -hmm. and is sort of in, in, insinuating that people are lying their way into the jury, which prosecutors say that that violates the gag order. Joey Jackson was saying maybe it's time for the judge to send a message to Trump, put him in the holding cell for a couple of hours, oh. see if that changes his... Couple hours, see if that changes his attitude. Listen to this guy. Mood. What do you think? Is Absolutely. The problem is that it's not clear how much authority that the judge has to just do that. The mm. judge, at a minimum, has to have a hearing uh, under New York state law. It's not the judge being weak or feckless or afraid of Donald Trump. The law says that there's a process that he has to follow. Now, the question is, is it civil contempt where you're trying to compel him to behave better in the future? Is it criminal contempt where you're locking him up for things he's done in the past, which is much harder and almost, in effect, requires a, a separate trial? My, my big question is, why is 
is the judge waiting until the 23rd, I guess four days from now, right. to even have that hearing in the first place? He could, he could have done so yesterday or today to really send that message. Because he's got to go get instructions from Matthew Colangelo and the Biden administration, okay? He's got to get his orders from whoever is actually running all this. So this is important to the court, and this conduct needs to stop. Yeah, Mark, I'm wondering, how does it change the race? We saw what happened when he had the mug shot. Yeah. That fired up his base, obviously. It wasn't really necessary at that point. It kind of wrapped up the nomination. But if he actually has to go into a holding right. jail cell, what yeah. does that do? Yeah, even- what does that do? What does that do? Good question. I hope they're prepared for that. No, I guess we don't know. You know, I don't think we know, but it really does put us yeah. between this rock and a hard yeah, place, right? Does. And and the rock is like, listen, he has done something that's wrong. And if it was any of us sitting at this table, would we? You would be, have never been charged for know, anything. Held to a higher or is held to a higher standard. Would we have to go, you know, into that holding cell? I think that if he does go into this hole, if that were to happen, first of all, I think you would probably see civil unrest yes, uh, across the yes. country, certainly in, in some cities. Yes. That's one in two. Poli- and I'm not endorsing that at all, but I think that would naturally happen. Politically, if I'm the Biden campaign, I don't want to necessarily see him in jail because that's just going to get people more inflamed and more fired up. I don't yeah. think that's necessarily great for the country, even if we are bending the rules for something. Right, we're going to get you guys away in on this. Just- These people are lunatics. They don't even understand what they're doing. So you can see they are sitting around gaming this out like it's a sporting event and having fun dunking on their political opponents. So they're playing with fire big time. And I think they're being a little cavalier in their attitudes. Now, they are going to try to do it. Right? We've been a long time here. One of our main arguments has always been, well, he's not going to go to prison. He's got Secret Service protection. And that's with the Republicans having the House. And that's that the Republicans make it to the finish line in the House before something happens to the election. So if that doesn't happen, if this flips back over to the Democrats' hands, it could be a bloodbath in political realms and hopefully not elsewhere. But we're gonna be here continuing to cover this, my friends. It is a precarious position. So thanks for alerting people that you know or love to this situation because they are working hard on it, plotting away. And we're gonna be here to continue to cover it. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking this video. Thanks for checking out some of the links in our description below. Of course, we've got our members only community. We do live streams in the morning for members only six days a week, including on Saturdays. We have an awesome community. We talk about a bunch of other stuff that we can't get to here. It's a great way to get our day started. We'd love to have you come join us. So check out the link, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We'll see you over there and back here on the next one. All right, my friends, that is it for us on the day. Man, what a day. So Secret Service protection is now up in the balance. Trump smeared with the fake cases from Matthew Colangelo in court. And we saw that the jury has been selected and we'll continue to keep our eyes on opening arguments that start on Monday. But now, my friends, it's a beautiful Friday, and it's time to hear from you. And let's see what you have to say about this before we go over to our after party where we debrief today's events at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Who is joining us on the day? We got some amazing friends in the house. And what's up? We got Donut Miami clipping for us. What's up, Donut? Who's here? Lucy the dog is here. Says, woohoo! Watching the Watchers is my favorite podcast. Man, you're awesome. Says, let's get this party started. Godspeed and grace to everyone who watches the show and the trials for sharing the trials for our information. Well, thanks for saying that, Lucy. Such a nice compliment. We are having a lot of fun, Lucy. We're going to be covering a lot, learning a lot together, seeing a lot of insanity together. And so we're grateful to have your tremendous company. B-Man is here, says Secret Service protection is covered under the impeachment clause two. So are you saying that this wouldn't impact it, that this bill would not be able to remove it, or that if he was properly impeached, maybe they could remove that? You're saying in addition, like not two, but in addition to? Good to see you, B-Man. Thanks for the dono, my man. 1R5 over on the Rumbles says, what's up? He says, in court, Donald Trump looks like an adult sitting at a desk in a room full of first graders. Too bad there's no teacher there. That's a pretty accurate assessment. It is. It's a bunch of, you know, basically children in adult body suits who just have a bloodlust to take out their political opponents. 
it's not much different. You know, you see those videos of like those high school girls beating up some high school girl. You're like, what is going on? It's just tribalism, ultimately. It's not actual adult thinking with competent, you know, logistical faculties. It's just tribalism. We got crashes here, says the long train of abuses and usurpations is speedily coming to a head. The delusional left are speeding at breakneck speed to an, to an probably unavoidable confrontation. Yeah, I think a lot of people are seeing that. You know, everybody can kind of prognosticate into the future and that there will be some decoupling if you want to, you know, be peaceful about it. But when? How far out? Six months? Six years? Who knows? What's up? This old guy says, I'm not standing for this judge with a lowercase j. No respect for him or his office. Yeah, it's a shame what they've done to the bench, to the entire practice of law. And they've all done that in the name of taking out Trump. And it's funny, you know, the left is going to be celebrating this. Like the left is celebrating their own demise uh, of the justice system because they hate Trump so much. It's a really suicidal kind of an ideology. It's weird. Knox is in the house, a defense attorney in Texas, says TGIF all. I rewatched The Jinx, which is the story of millionaire Robert Durst and his murder trial in Galveston. I highly recommend for weekend watching. Hmm. The Jinx. It features not only the amazing legendary Texas defense attorney Dick DeGarren, but it also but also Fanny's pink dress correctly worn by Janine Pirro. That's hilarious. Funny, the Jinx. Hmm. Janine Pirro's in that one, huh? How funny. Well, good suggestion there, Knox. If you're looking for something, now you know what you do th- to do. Thank you, Knox. We got Rob is over on Rumble. Says woke people who freak out over clapping that they need to have finger waving. Some Dems freak if you say Trump's name. What if these nuts are in the same room as same room as Trump? Then they have an anxiety attack. They do. They were breaking down. You know, you kind of feel bad for those people. It's like, what's going on there? Clearly. <sighs> All right. Anyways, wait, what's up? MAGA hat says if the court finds out Trump likes it, sub zero temperatures, the temperature is going to go up. <laughs> That's right. They'll have, they'll have, you know, 10 friggin' a- uh, AC guys there. Everyone's freezing. Everyone's freezing. Trump's like, I kind of like it. They have like five HVAC guys crashing into the car. Judge runs home, gets his, his uh, little space heater from his home office. He brings his space heater in. He's like, put that by Trump. Put that, put that heater over there by him. He's a little too cool. Fragile, fragile. That's the right, that's a great word, KB. And what's up? Good to see you in the house. What's up? We got Rob. Good to see you. Says T Ruth really upsets most people. Truth really upsets most people. That's a nice little acronym. We got an acronym of our own over here today. Thank you for that, Rob. Yeah, we could make a lot of, um, you know, Benny, Benny Thompson acronyms. Benny is totally, clearly hateful. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you know, hey, what's up? Knox is here. Not too many ditch diggers in Manhattan. No, not too many of them. Not a lot of blue collar uh, jobs there. A lot of lawyers, accountants, and others. And not a surprise. Spuds, 13 months as a membo. What's up? We got, he says, had to say something for being here for over a year. Amazing. 13 months. That's a year and then some. And we've seen some serious stuff there, Spuds. So thanks for being here, my man. Great to see you. We got Knox says, that Order of Man podcast is heavy military man stuff. Manly men like Trump. I was wondering. It's, it kind of sounds like a good one because they were asking him questions about, you know, like affairs and cheating and stuff. It's like, hey, don't, you know, it's like be a man. Don't, you know, be someone who lacks, don't be, don't have infidelity in your relationships. Interesting. It sounds like a good one. Maybe take a look at it. 51K says some dude set himself on fire outside of the Trump trial. What the heck is wrong with people? Yeah, I don't know. Sick. He's just unwell, right? Clearly unwell. So not good. Not good. Probably, they'll probably blame Trump for that too. Maybe indict him again. You know, your treat, your tweets caused that to happen outside. Salty Sarge says, is it me or is the jury pool from Manhattan? It's a baker's dozen plus five of soup kitchen dented cans. Marionettes to be manipulated, intimidated, and moved to convict. 
Yeah, it was a lot of people who were like institutional people, you know, the institutional people who don't like people who threaten institutions just by default. I think that Trump is an institution threatener for sure, which is why they hate him so much. JD Farmer says, dude, me and my buddy are watching this like as the world turns, LOL, hi, Adam. What's up, Adam? And shout out to JD Farmer. Like as the world turns, just as almost like a spectator, you know, just watching a dumpster fire pass us by. Shout out to Adam and JD. Hey, Larry says, we have a fake corrupt judge, a corrupt prosecutor, and a biased lying jury, and it's so disgusting. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's 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 pretty bad. The jury, we still have to see how the jury ultimately looks. I'd like to kind of get an overall pick. Now that we know who everybody is, I'd like to see, you know, kind of mull it over. But you know, it's New York. You're already picking from a poisoned well, hoping you get a clean glass of water, but it's, you know, it's, it's like 80% blue for Joe in, in 2020. Richard M. What's up? Our newest supporter over on the YouTubes. And Sandy says self-immolations were common during the Vietnam war. Many in the USA, it was a form of war protest. This is just another duplication of events leading up to the 1968 DNC convention riot held in Chicago, just like that, they'll be held this summer. So Sandy, you have been pretty dang consistent and prognosticatory on this one. You're, you're drawing a lot of parallels between the 1968 DNC convention. And we looked that up on our Membo stream and uh, kind of talked about it. It's very curious you know, it feels very curious. And, and, and again, I think in the DNC riots in 1968, it was not left enough, right? The DNC was a little too moderate. So they were, they were pulling them to the left. So it could cause unrest. Could it lead to a canceled election? You know, who knows? Sheila P. Can we find the judge in the prosecutor's office for contempt? They have contempt for the actual rule of law. This is unconstitutional BS. Good to see you, Sheila. No, not, I mean, not really. We can't really, I mean, you can assess a fine probably, but I don't know if he would pay it, you know, like we hereby fine Judge Mercon $1,000 for being a loser. How about that, punk? But he's not, you know, we have no jurisdiction over him on that in that regard. But you're right, they do have contempt. And a court of appeals or maybe the Supreme Court will not, um, will correct this record. What's up? NY says, Alan Dershowitz pointed out yesterday, defendant not in custody can waive his court appearance. Is that... Is that something in New York, in a felony in Arizona? If you have a felony, you got to be in court. Like you got to be there. So unless the judge gives you permission, in other words, you don't have the default decision to waive voluntarily for civil cases. You can for misdemeanors. You can certainly have your lawyer appear for you. And the default kind of status in Arizona is you don't have to appear for misdemeanors. Your attorney can handle pretrials, but yeah, but even, but this is a trial, you know, this is a trial like for pretrial. I think that's probably true. Not, not even for felonies. For felonies, you got to be there. But if it's, if it's a trial, you're going to want to be there even if you don't have to be there because you want the jury to see that you're there. Londo says, only the SCOTUS can save the nation at this point, and they won't. Yeah, I'm not even sure SCOTUS can do it. All right, like we, we've got a generational problem ahead of us, so we'll see. SCOTUS can slow it down, give us some time, I think, and help to... Um, create a more orderly transition, but yeah, we got a big problem. NY says the Democrats can try and pass this felon act. In the past, I've said Trump would have to build a jail. Benny Thompson spoiled evidence in the J6 case. He should be prosecuted. He should. So should the rest of the committee. Sandy says, let this new bill, the strip secret service be proof to everyone. They cannot jail Trump. They would need to pass a new law. If they currently had the power, they wouldn't need to do that. Folks, This means anyone trying right now gets arrested by Secret Service. They cannot put their hands on Trump while protected. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think a lot of the um, those conversations on CNN are kind of just like, you know, uh, a little little masturbatory for them. You know what I'm saying? What whatever that dude's name is, you know, they're just kind of enjoying themselves a little bit too much. It's like, what? Okay, come on. You know, you know, he's not going to jail. Unless they do this, and then maybe that's like a real threat if that happens. Jesser Bob says the new disgrace act would allow Hunter to go to prison then. Yeah, I think that's probably true, right? I think that's probably true. 
Now, after daddy's out, does he still get Secret Service protection? Does the family also get it for life, probably? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. You'd have that, too. You got Desert Flower. Welcome aboard our newest supporter, Desert Flower, in the house. Brandy Coffee says, should Trump go to the Supreme Court anyway? Uh, well, you mean in this case? Uh, I don't know that they're going to do anything. I mean, I think it's probably too late. Trial started. He's going to go to the Supreme Court, but you mean like, should he file like an emergency something now? I don't, yeah, I don't think that they're going to do that unless, you know, he could maybe make an immunity argument, but I don't think the judge is going to stop this case absent the Supreme Court ordering them to stop. Maybe we wake up on Monday and there's something filed. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think so. All right, good to see you, Brandy. It's a good thought experiment. I don't, I mean, he's at the Supreme Court on immunity right now. We have oral arguments next week. We're covering those live. So like he's already there. So if SCOTUS, he's already there, you know, like you don't just go, yeah. So I think, I think we'll wait till Thursday. I don't think he should go now. We'll wait till Thursday and then decide. Sheila says, pray all you watching the Watchers fans, pray. We need to keep control of the House, gain control of the Senate, and win the White House in 2024. Yeah, that's all true. Every one of those statements, all true. Good to see you, Sheila. Thanks for saying that. Hey, hey, it's the Monkets bringing in five new members. Michael O is here. Melissa M, old lady farmers joining us. L Lambert and Lenny M, courtesy of Tony Hay Monkets. Hey, hey, it's the Monkets in the house. Peter R, six months as a membo. Man says, this drives me crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that lot, today's, today's, you know, it's a little bit uh, of an annoying final segment, I know. But we gotta, I, we gotta bring it to our attention. We have to talk about it. I saw it, I'm like, Rob, on a Friday, you wanna do this on a Friday? I'm like, we have to, we have to. And I said, okay, fine, we'll, we'll have to do it. Jennifer, what's up? Thanks for another great show, Rob. And stay strong watching the Watcher fam. Exactly, Jennifer. That's the good energy to end it on. Texas for me is here. Welcome aboard, Texas for me, our newest supporter on the YouTubes. Londo says, when the truck is stuck on the tracks and the train of abuses continues to move forward, we can all see the wreck before it happens from Londo. Good to see you, Londo. It's like a slow motion train wreck. Jester Bob says, how far away does his court clerk sit in this one? I think it's probably from the photograph, from the um, drawings, they're not on the same level. Only Angeron sat, sat aside next to his Greenfield, his GF. Crash to contrary on local says, this is avoidable, Rob. The left does not have to do this. Okay, so I misread your original comment. You said it was avoidable. You're right, they don't have to do this, but they're under they're under some sort of a spell. It's a weird thing that's happening to their brains. It's like a suicidal, um, almost a, uh, a parasitic relationship. Something has taken over them and it's now controlling them to their own demise. It's strange, strange behavior, but what can you do? Hey, S, we don't have to be a part of it. We're not gonna be a part of it. So S McGee says that report said it could cause civil unrest and cause people to flame up. Is that a bad joke? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that was an accurate assessment. I think it'll cause people, oh, cause people to flame up. Like what? The guy outside? You mean the courtroom? I see what you're saying. Is that a bad joke? He's like, man, man, if we put him in jail, people are going to be so mad, they're going to light themselves on fire. I'm like, okay, too soon, bro. All right, hey, Stephen Evans says, that big, beautiful spotlight could use a touch of the macho man, Randy Savage. The macho man, Randy Savage. I might have to watch some of that. I'll see if I can uh, incorporate. Are, do you say I need to be a little bit more manly? You know, incorporate some, uh, some more macho. Rawr, something like that. Rawr, you know, big, beautiful spotlight. Rawr, you know, something like that. All right. Hey, what's up, Sandy? The craziest part of all this is the left is destroying the very legal system they wish was still in place when they face accountability for what they're doing now. If the civilian mili if the civilian system is defunct, there is only the military justice system. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And what's so nefarious about this whole thing, it's they're using Trump, right? Trump is very, very useful for the deep state. Like they're like, man, this guy's like a gift, okay? 
because all they need to do is hold Trump up in front of the Democrats and they get so frothy, visceral, like they're foaming at the mouth that they will ask for the destruction of their own society. You know, like they'll just say, yes, we don't want democracy because Trump, we don't want justice because Trump. So they just dangle him around and they just react like vociferously. So they'll, they can do whatever they want. They just have to say, oh, well, Trump. Well, okay, no, no, we don't need free speech anymore. Oh, well, yeah, because Trump, you, we don't need a border. We don't need money. We need Ukraine. We need war. Why? Because Trump opposes it, right? They just take the opposite side. So the left, the, the deep state is like really great. They just use Trump and then causes like this kryptonite reaction from the other side. And that reaction causes the other side to destroy America, which is exactly what they want. So it's very, it's very sneaky, very pernicious. What's up, Jackie? It's been a great year with you, Rob. Happy anniversary, Jackie. Man, it's been a heck of a 12 months. You're right about that. I'll never forget it. it. Says, thanks for all you do. Thank you, Jackie. Really awesome to see you. Thanks for being a member, for being so amazing, for dropping the one-year anniversary comment. Great to have you. We're grateful to have you. Have a beautiful weekend ahead. Hey, Real with Robo says, my daughter just turned 18 and is voting for Trump. Man, she sounds like a smart young gal. Real with Robo, member for two months. And we love our two months. Grateful to have you. We got this one from Knox says, I was a kid in Chicago in 1968. There was true freaking passion in the streets. It was an angry summer and even a nine-year-old could feel it. Yeah, people are energetic. We can feel that. Like, I think that's a real thing, right? That's why, that's why Sunday has a feel and Friday has a feel and Monday has a feel. Why is that? Do you think it's because there's some, some strangeness in the air or something? No, it's because you live in cities and you interface with people and everybody feels the same way, right? We all absorb it from one another. So yeah, you can feel the passion in the streets. You can feel it. We're human beings, we're creatures. You know, We interface with one another, whether you like it or not. Lady I says, did you hear that we had another near catastrophe with two passenger jets today? No, I didn't see that one. Spud says, yippee, Abby Hoffman, who was involved in the Chicago riots would be considered far right by today's DNC. Lady I says, they're either paving the way for him to be jailed or taken out. Sandy says, today's left doesn't care the same as 1968. They care about setting off civil unrest and allowing 15 million, probably 30, to unleash on Americans. War protest and racial unrest is just the excuse. A, a lot of it today seems like it's kind of sport. Uh, NY says, watch Allen's video, video and you're a lawyer. I forgive you. Cite the legal and constitutional basis for a defendant who is not on bond to come to court. Okay, okay. So, so you're saying you recommend that Trump just doesn't show up to court and tells Mercon that I'm not constitutionally bound? Okay, we'll see. That's interesting legal advice there, NY. V is never silent, says Mike Gallagher, congressman, is having life threatened? Where's the DOJ? Don't even know about that. Lady I says, yeah, how does this new law work? Is it for anyone who qualifies for Secret Service protection? So if Biden is still eligible, but Hunter is disgraced, how does that work? We got this from Lady Ice. We'll skip that one. Jesser Bob says, was it the big, beautiful spotlight that got him? I No, we don't burn people. No, we don't light people on fire here. We shine out uh, Cretans and expose them. This old guy says, Benny Thompson has a long history of racism. He should be banned from Congress forever, forever. And amazing comments, my friends. Thank you all for those very generous donos. And we're grateful for your support on those. Let's say hello to our friends on X before we wrap it up on this beautiful Friday. Who is joining us on the day? We've got a couple of good comments here and a couple of memes. Uh, let's see what some of these look like. What's going on? Brandy Coffee's over there. We've got Forgotten My Name. D's over here. Good to see you, D. We have Azok. No, I don't think a private citizen could, could sue a judge. Salty Sarge says, if I had one true wish for the watchers, Learn to take care of yourselves and learn survival. Take caring of, taking care of others sparks divinity within all of us. I think that's absolutely true. 
We got some good memes from Glocky over there and Danny McWilliams. And hey, it's Paul Mino. Paul Mino says, hey, this is your face when you're watching the watchers. This is how you feel when you turn this show on, just like this. Yeah, yeah. That face when you're watching the watchers, amazing. What's up, Fred says. Uh, Benny Thompson, oh man, the way I see it, Benny Thompson should be in prison for deleting evidence on the J6 committee. And we have some other good memes over there from Glocky. And they look very curious. And I think there's probably some audio in there. So we'll leave those to, to, for you to go check out on X because they are always good from Glocky, who is a, a meme smith now. We got to add him to the mind map though. We'll get to that. Hey, what's up, my friends? Okay, so that was it for us on the day. We are going over to watchingthewatchers.locals.com for our members only after party. And we'll have a debrief that we will attend to over there. Of course, we'll have member-only streams in the morning as well. So come and join us. robertgovea.com, link down in the description is where you can get PDFs and our show reports and our calendar and our newsletter and our merch store all over there. And also watcherlodge.com. So come check out Watcher Lodge this Saturday. Tomorrow, we're gonna have our usual Sovereignty Saturday. And we have some fun stuff that we're gonna debrief and unpack tomorrow and so my friends let us before we wrap it up say thank you to our mods and our meme smiths who mod the fort down and keep things nice and orderly for us here our friends k bean in the house we got just cause playing hooky ronnie cole our friend zach nichols janek dog digger economy pilot and donut mind me all modding the fort down for us keeping things nice and orderly we got sleepy dog lee nathan na10 gigam gigam and Glocky in the house on the map. And so grateful for our meme smiths and everybody who keeps this train on the track. But my friends, that is it for us on the day and the week. It was a busy week, our first week into this new trial. And so things are gonna start to open up next week. We'll have opening arguments, witnesses will be called. And so the pace and the intensity will increase assuredly. And so. I hope that until we are back here on Monday, that you get yourself the best weekend you've had in a long time. You enjoy yourself, you recover, you relax, you recharge your energy tanks, getting outside, getting some fresh air, getting some sunshine, exercising those lungs, practicing your breathing, meditating, praying, whatever it is you do, cold plunge, hop in the sauna, go wild, Spend time with the people that you love, our friends, our family, and those that mean the most to us in our lives because we have to come back restored and ready to go on Monday to get into it all again. And when we do, we need to see you right back here so that together with your help, we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight of accountability and transparency down upon our system with the hope of finding justice. Make it a beautiful night and an amazing weekend, my friends. I'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye-bye.